Hi, this is Randy Kirk, and I'm going to get wild and crazy on you right now. Um, uh, if you, uh, I'm going to get wild and crazy in terms of making some predictions about how SpaceX is going to fit into Master Plan 3 and how the Boring Company is going to fit in, because on the face of it, it's not obvious. So I had to let the old brain go crazy and think about wild possibilities that might exist for both companies. So let's start with the more the, the most obvious. I think that the boring company uh, has the most obvious opportunities. And the, the obvious opportunities there would be that we can take traffic underground. We just need to do this much faster. If we can add more lanes and we can do it with the boring company at substantially lower cost than the uh, than you know other methods, uh, this is going to be a huge help. Uh, to traffic running at more efficient speeds. Um, so that would, be, that would be one way that the Boring Company could definitely uh, participate in this future that Elon Musk is going to be talking about. Um, so the other way is that, in particular, if we take trucks underground. Now, this is my wild idea. I've been talking about this idea for a year. Maybe it's on Elon's list of things to do. Maybe I didn't even think it up. Maybe somebody else suggested it. And maybe it's a combination of this and that that I've heard. I think that in major shipping lanes, uh, we've talked about from like LA port uh, to the Riverside area where there's all these uh, distribution centers that you would not even put the containers on a truck at the port. This would free up the port. This would dramatically change how things are run down there, but rather the containers would go onto, a, onto an automated uh, sled the sled would then go into the uh, an underground system and would be taken along an automated track, not even a track, you know, sort of like what they're doing in uh, Las Vegas, but it, there would be no driver. It would now take it along that and there would be exits at various points along the way once it gets into the area of Los Angeles where the distribution centers are located. And then uh, there would be uh, opportunities there where these containers would then be offloaded on two semi trucks and taking the last mile, last mile meaning last mile, last five miles, last 20 miles, but get them off of the 60, the 605, uh, the 10, um, et cetera, et cetera, freeing up the traffic dramatically in Los Angeles. Now, I'm in LA. I don't know what it's like in other cities, but I believe that every city that has ports has the same problem. And so I would think that Miami and New Jersey, New York, um, St. Louis, et cetera, uh, uh, New Orleans, uh, many of these places would have uh, this similar situation where massive amounts of product is being loaded and unloaded at these ports onto semi-trucks. And then these uh, semi-trucks are jamming up the local freeways uh, going uh, then to their destinations, uh, oftentimes these massive distribution centers. So that would be another way that I can see Boring Company uh, actively over the next seven years building uh, underneath existing freeways. This should be the easiest way. This should be no problem with the right-of-ways. Uh, it should be the cheapest way. Uh, it should be areas that are understood and known. Um, anyway, uh, it, to me, it's a no-brainer, but maybe maybe it's been thought of and there's a big couple of major reasons why it could never happen. Tell me in the comments. I'd love to hear your comments on all of this. Add to my ideas. Tell me my ideas are nuts. I'd like to hear your comments on all of this. Okay, now that would be the, uh, the, the more obvious way, and yet it's not being done. It's not even being talked about. I haven't seen any, any uh, state I've not seen any city. I've not seen any uh, trucking company. I've not seen Elon Musk. I've seen nobody talking about the idea of getting these big rigs off in these specific point-to-point -point situations, getting them off the road and getting them in the tunnels. Okay, next would be, this is a little farther out there, but again, it's kind of like you probably have thought of it. I, I would think a lot of people would have thought that the boring company could make mining a lot more palatable to the neighbors. Right now, you're chopping off the top of a mountain, digging into the side of the mountain. You're going in uh, to, if it's a level ground, you're going down and creating a quarry. Uh, you're scarring the earth, scarring the landscape. It's ugly. It's, it looks terrible for you know, 20, 50, 100 years. 
And then what do you do? Does it ever get covered up? These are the concerns of a lot of people in the neighborhood, not in my backyard. Are you going to make this horrible mess? And then we worry that you'll ever clean it up. Well, if you take a boring company machine, which currently goes into the ground, processes the material as it's ground up, that material is now processed and out the other end comes bricks, bricks of the dirt that have been, uh, have been pulled out of there. And then they commonly use these bricks to, as part of, of the way that they build the walls. And all of this is automated. So why wouldn't it be possible to burrow into the ground where there are mining deposits that would be worthwhile? You burrow in, you're processing the materials, and the bricks are coming out in two different ways. In one way, the bricks are going back in to prop up the walls or just to fill back in. Um, and the other way, they're bricks that are useful bricks that have a, enough mineable material in them that you those are the ones you want to excavate. So those come out the other end, they get loaded up, and they get taken to the processing center. After you have mined out, um, however you would work that out, the details, please don't ask me to do the details, <laughs> but you go in, your, your boring company machine goes in there, it mines a section, it finishes that section, it moves over to the next section, and none of this, hardly any of it is visible from the surface. It becomes a minor uh, blemish as opposed to a huge scar. And when you're done, it's done. There's no question of putting it back in or, or solving the problem of having a big scar that nobody ever covers. It's solved from day one. So that would be one of the ideas that I would think might come up this uh, this week on, in, on Investor Day uh, for uh, the Boring Company. All right. Now, uh, okay, let's see. SpaceX, uh, to me, the, the, the obvious one that people have mentioned, very few people are talking about this. I'm, I'm unclear as to why nobody is talking about the other aspects. Elon has specifically said he will have harsh parts of Master Plan 3 that will deal with SpaceX and that will deal with the Boring Company, but our, nobody's, nobody's doing videos on it. I, no articles being written on it. I looked around, couldn't find much. Okay, so Starship, or Star, uh, uh, SpaceX rather, the obvious thing is that they're heavy in met uh, metallurgy development, um, materials, material science. Uh, they commonly trade back and forth uh, with Tesla asking SpaceX for help with material science. I don't know that that's going to be the key. Um, SpaceX, I mean, um, uh, uh, Tesla has, I'm sure, quite substantial material science people already. Uh, maybe it is, maybe it won't, but I'm not sure that will be the direction. So let's think about some of the things that would be less obvious. Number one would be asteroid mining. And you're like, okay, I thought we've all decided that asteroid mining is not possible. It's not efficient enough. It's not going to work. That's before Starship. And I think if I'm not mistaken, help me out in the comments below. I think the U.S. government is, has already made a deal with uh, SpaceX. Uh, to go up, at, or maybe it's a maybe it's a mining company or a company that Tesla has. They've actually uh, employed uh, SpaceX uh, to go up and uh, take the first shot at doing some mining of an asteroid. I may be wrong on that, but I think that's actually in the works. So, what if Tesla? If Tesla, what if SpaceX is not only going to get in in uh, cahoots with this one company, but is thinking about doing it themselves? Uh, there could be all kinds of opportunities for mining using a combination of SpaceX and, of course, as just mentioned, the boring tunnel equipment in order to go up and do this effort. Okay, uh, but Starship is uh, an order of magnitude cheaper than Falcon, which is an order of a couple of orders of magnitude cheaper than anything else that's out there. So could this be a way that we're going to start getting more materials, especially the most the rarest materials that are, are, are of concern. All right, I think that's a low, low probability, but I think it's a, something to at least talk about. The next thing is that satellites are often used in order to get an, an analysis of the Earth's surface and even what's below the Earth's surface in order to know what is a good location for a mine. So it could be that some new satellites are being developed because up till now, I'm not sure anybody was concerned about great uh, mi mineral deposits for lithium or for copper, et cetera, et cetera. Some of these materials have been in plentiful supply, but all of a sudden, because of the effort to electrify uh, and to create all this battery storage, uh, we need more mines like that. Well, 
one of the ways to do that would be to use greater technology for locating uh, the right kind of topography, the right kind of uh, information uh, that would help them to decide that is a, a, an ore, ore rich opportunity down there. All right, so that may, some satellites like that may already be prepped um, at that point. And then the, the other one would be the possibility of using satellites to uh, help with the metering of traffic or the distribution of traffic or, or the, uh, we're already doing this, of course, with, um, with the various uh, 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 auto automobile systems that are telling us that this freeway over here is jammed. So take this one over here, or get off on the surface street and, and go over here. Um, so these are pretty effective. Uh, they're usually pretty accurate, but I guess what? I was just on the freeway at 5 a.m the other day, uh, heading towards the Los Angeles International Airport, and 60 miles away on the 91 freeway, it was the same as it would have been at 8 o'clock if I was going to uh, uh, going to work at, at 8 o'clock. So there's still plenty of uh, places where the freeway is jammed. It took, on the way back from LAX the other day, 60-mile trip, actually, I think it's 71-mile trip, took me two hours and 45 minutes. So I think we can do better. And maybe there's some satellite technology in the works with uh, SpaceX that might really allow us to become much better at uh, moving traffic, making it more efficient, less fuel, um, et cetera, et cetera. These could be part of the future. Anyway, there's a few ideas. Tell me your ideas. And tell me that that isn't fun to think about. Throw them on there. Put the comments on. And if you think it's fun to think about things like that or to hear Randy rant about ideas that he has about such things that's what we're doing on patreon it'll be i don't i was hoping to start right away and all of a sudden we have investor day and i'm so involved in trying to make sure that i get everything that you want to know about investor day and that i want to know about investor day done correctly done right produced and out to you as quickly as possible that i, I it might be i'm sorry patreon folks it might have to wait until after investor day and even a few days because there's going to be a lot of follow-up. So it might have to wait till like March 10 before we can really, really start getting into the future analysis that I'm planning to do on Patreon. But I will do some. And we are putting up uh, a lot of these videos early uh, for members of Patreon. Remember, it's only $5 a month. Uh, please, if you haven't already done it, I've got this series started. I guess you could call this part one of the series. Tomorrow morning should be the energy part of the series. This is a series of videos talking about the individual pieces of Investor Day, the individual pieces of the Master Plan 3, uh, as primarily as they affect Tesla. So this will be the only one on SpaceX and the Boring Company. But the one tomorrow morning will be all about uh, the energy aspects of, uh, of Tesla going forward, what I think will be happening on Master Plan 3, and also where we are today, what matters You'll want to watch these videos, and you may want to watch the one I did two days ago, or was that just yesterday? I think it was just last night. There was one last night that was talking about the changes in Elon Musk. 50% of you, or 50% of the people on Twitter, answered a poll that I did saying that Elon has changed. They've seen it. We're all seeing it. He's wearing suits. His hair looks normal. <laughs> He's acting like a grand grandpa. He's not a grandpa yet. His kids are 19, his oldest. But when you get to around 50, 51, you know, things start to change. I, I went through some changes myself at that age. So watch that video. That's kind of the setup for the whole series, because I think part of the reason he's changing is Master Plan 3, and I'll explain that. Then this morning, there was a video that I put out that had to do with a kind of a general idea of what's happening with Master Plan 3 and kind of setting up this entire series this one might have been one of the most important videos I've ever done. I can't recommend it highly enough. Uh, it's already kind of uh, hitting some really big numbers in terms of views. Uh, go back and watch that. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, this has been Randy Kirk. I've really enjoyed talking to you today.